assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon you. And welcome to the pre-iftar program on behalf of ICJ. Inshallah, we'll be discovering a new chapter of the Qur'an every day. But unfortunately, we cannot go into detail of each verse. But at least we can get a little taste of the main theme of each surah and get a look at how all the verses are relevant to that main theme or subject. And not just that, but also for you as a Muslim, you should be able to try to relate to these surahs and act upon the rules within it, putting in mind that the surah or the chapter name is always linked to its main subject or goal. Now, today, inshallah, we'll be journeying with certain ma'idah. And I have to go all the way to the beginning in order for me to build or explain to you how it's all linked together. Now, Surah Al-Ma'idah is the only surah that begins with, O oh, you who believe. Ya ayyuha ladina amin. And what's really interesting is that it is the most surah with this phrase repeated. O oh, you who believe. This verse is repeated 88 times in the Quran. 16 times out of the 88 is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And the very first verse of this chapter is its main theme. And before I go on to explaining this, the verse, O oh, you who believe, needs to stand from us. We hear this verse or phrase so many times, but what does it mean or what does it imply? It means, O oh, you who believed in me as a God, and O oh, you who accepted to submit or enter my religion, and O oh, you say you are true believers, obey my orders. Do you see what O oh, you believe here implies? And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who says, if you hear the words, O oh, you who believe, then pay attention. That's what the companions would do, for it's either good that you'll be ordered to do, or evil that you'll be ordered to refrain from. So, Surah Al-Ma'idah is Madaniyya or Madinan. It was revealed in Medina, one of the very last surahs revealed. And you will see that some of its verses were revealed after the farewell pilgrimage, which was shortly after the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's death. And that is why Aisha radiallahu anha says, it is from the last surahs revealed, so whatever you find in it to be permissible, then allow it. And whatever you find to be uh, in it to be forbidden, then abandon it. So what is the theme or the subject of Surah Al-Ma'idah or the table spread? The subject of this surah is found at its very beginning. The very first words, O oh, you who believe, fulfill the pledges or contracts. Fulfill your obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you see how the Quran is flowing? First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets the Islamic rules in Surah Al-Baqarah. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to cling to these rules in Surah Ali Imran. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, in order for me to give you these set of rules and assign you as a vicegerent on earth, beware of oppression and be just with people. And then finally he comes to the surah and tells you, after I have told you all this, hold tight and cling on to your pledge with me. Surah Al-Ma'idah stresses on the importance of fulfilling your obligation towards pledges or contracts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know, once Ramadan approaches, a lot of us have the intention to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have that enthusiasm inside of us. But I wonder, will we really fulfill these pledges? So this is the main theme of Al-Ma'idah, fulfill the pledges. And there will be 16 calls to the believers and each call will stress on the fulfillment of a certain pledge. This pledge fulfill it and that pledge fulfill it. And then in between every couple of verses, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stressing again on the importance of fulfilling pledges. So, let's look at the first call to the believers. O oh, you who believe, fulfill all contracts. Lawful for you are the animals of grazing livestock, except for that which is recited to you in this Quran. So what is the first command? Fulfill the pledges. And the first pledge mentioned here is a very strange one. What is the pledge? eating lawful or halal food. Do not eat except what has been made lawful or halal, lawful, sorry, or halal for you. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with what is halal or permissible, then do not recite to what is prohibited. And do you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful here? He subhanahu wa ta'ala did not start by forbidding some foods, but by making permissible most foods. The origin is that we want to make permissible, not that we want to forbid and make things difficult upon you. Because you might get the impression that there's a pledge, and it's the first thing in the verse, so it must be a set of strict orders or commands. But no, fulfill the pledges, then right away it has been made lawful or permissible for you. Subhanallah, you see his mercy? So the first verse is about lawful foods. So he subhanahu wa ta'ala started with what? With our life necessities. 
and you'll see the surah starts with pledges dealing with our life necessities and it will end all the way at the end with the aspects of islamic laws so he subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you step by step with these pledges and you'll see directly in the second verse right away again the second call oh you who believe do not violate the rights of allah or the sacred month or neglect the marking of the sacrificial animals and garlanding them, or violate the safety of those coming to the sacred house, seeking bounty from their Lord and his approval, and cooperate in righteousness and piety, but do not cooperate in sin and aggression and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is severe in penalty. So you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting out noble human values. Do you see the jump? As if he subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you the pledges that you committed to fulfill start all the way from the food you will eat to human rights and values like justice and cooperating and doing good and enhancing social unity. All of this in just verse number two. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to the third verse and starts all over again. What has he prohibited? Prohibited to you is dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he lists to you in detail what has been prohibited. And you'll see that it's a very important statement coming here in verse 3. What does he say in verse 3? Today, I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as a religion. Now, if we come to think, why would this statement come here? Because committing to a pledge cannot happen without completion. You cannot commit to something unless it's fully completed. So you know what you're committing to, right? You cannot commit to something that is unknown to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, the religion has been completed. It has been perfected. So now you can commit to it and keep your pledge. My dear brothers and sisters, fulfill your obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay steadfast, not only in Ramadan, but also after, inshallah. Now, let's move on to verse 5. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on from what is permissible to eat to who it's permissible to marry, from chaste women, even if it's from the people of the books, as long as they're chaste and decent. And after setting what is permissible to eat and who it's permissible to marry, he subhanahu wa ta'ala moves to verse 6 and states a very strange point, starting it again with, O oh, you who believe. What does he state here? He says, O oh, you who believe, when you rise to perform prayer, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbows. Now, you start thinking to yourself, why would salah or prayer be mentioned here? And it is if as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, this is what you can eat from the goods of this dunya, and this is who you can marry from this dunya. The goods of this dunya or this life, now come to the goods of spirituality. Come let me show you how to purify your soul, how you can attain the goods of the soul, wudu, ghusl, and then entering salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the goods for our physical needs, food and marriage, and then our spiritual needs, salah. So you have good food, good spouses, and good spirituality. You follow the sequence here? And remember how every five or six verses, he subhanahu wa ta'ala goes back to reminding you to fulfill your obligation towards pledges. And I'd love for you to go back after listening to this explanation and read Surah Al-Ma'idah again after having this explanation in mind, inshallah. Hopefully it will, you know, have, you know, enlighten it for you a little bit in a better way. Now, looking at verse 7, and remember Allah's blessing upon you and your commitment to worship Him alone when you said, we hear in your way. Do you remember the ending of Surah Al-Baqarah? He subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you, what did the believers say? قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا we hear and we obey. They don't sit and think about it. No, 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 no. We hear something, we obey it right away. So will you say, we hear and we obey? Now, moving on to the next verse and call four. And if you realize that the 16 calls are like pauses, and after each call is a set of divine orders, and then he reminds you, be careful, fulfill the pledges. This chapter or surah is a very serious chapter. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, teach your men Surah Al-Ma'idah, but why Ya Rasulullah? So that they can turn out to be real men, men who can keep their word and keep their promises. Now, moving on to the following verse, O oh, you, oh, 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 you who believe, be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses in justice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is nearer to righteousness and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. So Allah mentions food, marriage, souls, 
And then what? Justice. Be just. What is part of your commitment? Be just. Even if someone oppressed you. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if I myself fulfill my obligation towards you, won't you fulfill yours towards me? Listen to what the verse says. Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds that for them there is forgiveness and great reward. And then he moves on to the fifth goal. O oh, you who believe, remember the favor of Allah upon you when a people determined to extend their hands in aggression against you, but he withheld their hands from you and fear Allah and upon Allah let the believers rely. Again, he's stressing on fulfilling pledges. And then you see he subhanahu wa ta'ala how he starts talking about Bani Israel or the children of Israel. But we think to ourselves, why here in particular? Because they breached covenants or pledges. They broke their promises. Listen to what the verse says. Allah did take a covenant with the children of Israel. And we made from among them 12 leaders. And Allah said, I am with you. If you establish prayer and give zakah and believe in my messengers and support them and loan Allah a goodly, a goodly loan, I will surely remove from you your misdeeds and admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow. But whoever of you disbelieves after that has certainly strayed from the soundness of the way. And then the next verse says, So for their breaking of the covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. Can you imagine the punishment? Hardened hearts and cursed. By who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow, that's intense, subhanAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates the story of Musa alayhi salam with the children of Israel when he tells them to enter the sacred land or Palestine or Jerusalem and how they feared to do so. Listen to what the verse says. So it shall be forbidden upon them for 40 years. In the beginning he said, I make permissible for you the goods of this dunya. Why? Because you fulfill your pledges with Allah. But if you break your promises, then it, should be made, it shall be made difficult upon you. Forbidden upon you for 40 years. So think to yourself, why is the story of Prophet Musa salam, mentioned here? So it can set an example and remind us of what has happened to those who broke their promises from those who came before us. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to another example of someone breaking a pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sons of Adam. And narrate upon them the true story of the two sons of Adam. And the verse goes on until Cain or Qabil killed his brother Abel or Habil. And there is a very neat point here. If you realize the verse is talking about the children of Israel refusing to enter Jerusalem, which is our um, verse, I think, 20 to 26, are directly followed by the story of Adam's sons. What ties these two stories together? What's the relevance between refusing to enter the sacred land and the sons of Adam? If you look in both stories, they both broke covenants. But in the first story, the Jews broke their covenant out of cowardice. While in the second story, Adam's son broke his covenant because he was reckless or impetuous. He killed his brother hastily. So we have two different types of breaking covenants. One out of cowardice, sorry, and the other out of recklessness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is displaying to us in two stories, two different types of breaking promises or covenants. So we have different examples. And then we look at verses 7 and 8, or the, sorry, not, seven, not verses, but the 7th and the 8th call, where you as a Muslim are required to fulfill new pledges. Listen what the verse says. O oh, you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians as allies. And I want to stop here for a minute, and I want to point out something here. This verse here is not an insult against non-Muslims, sorry. For if you look back a couple of verses, it says, Muslims can marry chaste Christian and Jewish women. This verse does not call to rejecting, but there's a big difference between tolerance, treating others well, and between blindly copying and imitating them and losing your identity. These verses are not insulting, but they're reminding us as Muslims of preserving our identity. Then we move on to the ninth goal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, whoever of you should revert from this religion, Allah will bring forth in place of them a people he will love and whom will love him. And now this is a really beautiful verse here. Why? Because this verse should have said what? If you don't follow my path, then await a torment or what? Or punishment from me, right? You don't follow me, you get a punishment. But no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you don't want to follow my path, then other people who truly love me will come forth. And not just that, but people whom I, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will love. Can you imagine he's telling you, if you break your covenant, your punishment won't be torment? No. But instead he makes you eager by telling you, 
I will replace you with those who love me and whom I will love. SubhanAllah. How could you accept that upon yourself? Hold tight, guys. We're almost there. Ramadan is almost over and you can keep that pledge and keep holding on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you. How can we tolerate being, you know, replaced with other people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love? And then the call keeps going, the calls keep going on until we reach the twelfth one, which is a very strong one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, indeed intoxicants, gambling, sacrificing on stone altars to other than Allah and divining arrows are but an abomination from the work of Satan. So avoid it that you may be successful. So how can you come near drinking or fortune telling after hearing these verses? He put drinking with the pledges. Do you see how serious it is? And then the calls go on until we reach the 14th and 15th call. And both are very significant as well. Look what the 14th call says. O oh, you who believe, do not, about, do not ask about things which, if they were revealed to you, will distress you. But if you ask about them while the Qur'an is being revealed, they will be revealed to you. Allah has pardoned that which is past, and Allah is forgiving and forbearing. So what is the value of this call? You see, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps stressing on fulfilling pledges, He puts for you a standard or a regulator to follow. What is that? Don't be harsh on yourselves. Yes, fulfill pledges and be careful of what is prohibited, starting from what is permissible from foods all the way to intoxicants and gambling. And then He sets a standard for you and says what? Don't be hard on yourselves. Don't ask about things that Allah does not mention. For if it were revealed to you, it would only distress you more. SubhanAllah. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala sets another standard for you in the following call, the 15th divine call. O oh, you who believe, upon you is a responsibility for yourselves. Those who have gone astray will not harm you when you have been guided. To Allah is your return altogether. Then he will inform you of what you used to do. You know what the rule to follow is here? The first was not to be hard on yourselves by asking about matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention. And the second he says, if all those around you deviate from his path, keep steadfast, steadfast to your vows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If everyone turns away, hold on to your promise and pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a very strong message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of us. Keep your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, so let's summarize now. Surah Al-Ma'idah, or the table spread, speaks about what? It spoke about divine penalties regarding theft and robbery. It spoke about sticking to applying Allah's or God's rules, laws. It spoke about pledges in eating and drinking. It spoke about imitating non-Muslims blindly and aligning with them. This surah reminds us of all types of pledges. And what is interesting here is that the scholars say that the objective Islamic law are summed up in five points, serving the aims of Islam itself. What are these five points? Protection of religion, protection of one's mind, protection of wealth, protection of life, and protection of honor. These five points are all covered in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And then the Surah has a beautiful ending, saying, on the day when Allah will assemble the messengers and say, what was the response you received? They will say, we have no knowledge. Indeed, it is you who is the knower of the unseen. The beginning is, O you who believe, fulfill your pledges. And the middle, O messenger, convey that which has been revealed to you. And the end, on a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should assemble all the messengers. The best way to conclude, O oh, you who believe, fulfill your pledges is, you will all meet on the day of judgment. Beware of God's reckoning on the day of judgment, for it is grave and severe. And then we look at the final verses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the day when the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. Now relate that ayah to fulfilling pledges. SubhanAllah. Only if you commit to the pledges and you're honestly truthful, that's the only thing that's going to benefit you on the day you meet Allah. Now, one question remains. Why is the surah called the table spread or al-ma'idah? Is it because what happened between Isa alayhi salam and the disciples? How they asked him for a table to descend upon them from the heaven full of food? But even if so, what does this have to do with the theme of the surah? What does it have to do with pledges? You see, before this table was sent down upon them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them what? I will send it down to you. But if any of you disbelieve after that, I will punish him with a punishment that I have never punished any other in the worlds before. If you break your covenant or pledge after such a miracle, your punishment will be one that no one has endured ever before. 
That's why it was called the table spread. Because it had to do with vows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah, Today I have perfected your religion for you. And as if the message is what? You disciples asked for a heavenly table and you got it. So if you break your pledge after that, your punishment will be severe. And as for you, Islam has been perfected for you. So if you break your pledge or go astray, then the punishment will be severe. O oh, Ummat Muhammad, fulfill your pledges and stick to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow through with what you have submitted to. The day you said, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger. The day you said, Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah bless you in this holy month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.